that we are so prompt uh, every time uh, we start the program sharp at 5 o'clock. And Dr. Karan Singh is equally particular about the timing. He has telephoned twice to me to confirm the timings and uh, see that uh, we start on time. So I'm very happy that Today, as we look at the events, there was a big asymmetry, a great gap between the promise and the present realities. We have a Prime Minister which was given an award for his integrity in the United States as one of the best states person in the world. And then we have a country today mired in, I don't have to even mention, the too many, I think we are low, perhaps the lowest ebb, hit the lowest point in the national integrity. And we have in this country, great country of ours, women occupying highest positions. The president of the country is a lady. The head of the United Front is a lady. The speaker is a lady. The chief ministers are four generated by our not having our own concepts and categories to discuss our issues. We use Western categories, we use Western ideas, we use Western concepts in order to understand our problems. Therefore, we invariably play, fail in having the proper understanding. That's the result of why we are unable to solve the kind of problems that we have, find solutions to them. Now, I say all this, I can go on, but uh, I must stop here. But Dr. Gansi is one of those few people who have paid attention to this. If you read or hear him in his very, uh, very many uh, presentations, you can see here is a spark, here is an idea, here is a way that we can reach this camp. And Gandhiji had done it. Radhakrishnan has attempted to do, but I don't think he succeeded. I think he had succumbed again to the Western projects. But in Karan Singh, G, Dr. Karan Singh, I will see a ray of hope that perhaps some kind of vision might emerge, some kind of movement can take place, and that is the kind of revolution I would like to have. Political revolution we had, peaceful, successful, good political revolution. Now we need to have an intellectual revolution, an ideological revolution, and uh, for the present day world. Bhaskar Rao, the center of media studies, has done excellent work for two decades. I must congratulate you and your team because in these 20 years, I have had occasion, many occasions, to interact with Bhaskar and his team. And every time I am impressed by the vitality and energy that they have. And they have made a major contribution to media studies, particularly in the capital. When he asked me to speak, I wasn't quite sure what uh, topic I should choose. I would have chosen a philosophical topic as I do for uh, Professor Ramakrishna Rao, but I thought based on justice and based upon fundamental rights. Never been attempted on this scale ever before. The countries to, of Europe, which spearheaded democracy, are about the size of our states. But this sort of a pluralistic, multilinguistic, multi religious, multi ethnic, multilinguistic nation like ours is trying for the first time in history to build a solid and a progressive nation. So our revolutions are still unfinished. And very briefly, because one can go on and on forever for these revolutions, our political revolution, our economic revolution, our social revolution, our foreign policy revolution, and our spiritual revolutions. All of these five are still unfinished. And very briefly, I will try and uh, run you through what I consider about. Let us start with the political level. <coughs> Delhi is the epicenter of politics. Delhi is nothing without politics, and politics is nothing without Delhi. And so we must start with politics. And I'm not going to get into all the, all the immediate political problems, but the fact is that despite our democracy, 
our parliamentary functioning has not been up to the mark. Our parliamentary functioning has sometimes, in fact, become dysfunctional. I have been, I joined parliament first four years that our arts, our music, our dance, our theatre, our literature is growing very well. There's been an efflorescence in the last 30, 40 years. Bharatanatyam, which was unknown in North India, is now is in every home uh, in India. And when I open my cultural centers abroad, the first thing they want is Bharatanatyam and yoga. And we, we owe a debt of gratitude to the, to the South <laughs> for having kept intact our cultural traditions when we were with, in the North of fighting for our lives. And now again, like a reservoir, it has come back in order to irrigate and illuminate our cultural uh, uh, platform. So that is good. Uh, we have to uh, we have to develop a uh, a proper approach to religion. I've been involved in the interfaith movement for many decades. We are a, we are a, a unique country. We have. At least nine really world religions here. We have four Indic religions born in India. Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism and Sikhism. Five religions have come to us from West Asia. That is uh, Zarathustrianism, Judaism, Christianity, Islam and now the Baha'i faith.